we had the fortune through this horrible misfortune that we failed the world of road testing this digital future and and seeing what the limits of that technology were and also seeing where we most craved the analog alternative your latest book the future is analog what i like is how each chapter you explore a different aspect of human life work school culture the city and it doesn't seem like you're out to tear down any specific piece of technology. You're just trying to get people thinking about what we sacrifice when we turn over a piece of our lives to digital tech. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I get this sort of, oh, you must be anti-tech. You're a Luddite. I was on a podcast yesterday and it was, you know, the person was really like, like, well, you know, how do you, you know, digital can be good too. I'm like, I... I didn't, you know, I'm saying that I'm not, I'm not saying all digital technology is bad. Here we are speaking through a computer right now. And isn't it wonderful? Cause I would not be flying to Lexington, Kentucky to speak to you under most circumstances. Maybe if I would. It's a sure. beautiful place. You bourbon, should visit. It. Get some bourbon. Everyone <laughs> likes it. I know. I yeah. get it. But I, you know, I am not anti-digital technology. I use digital technology all the time, far more than I should, right? I use social media to promote my work and I use computers to write and research books and video conferencing things to speak to people or do interviews or whatever, right? But what I am talking about is figuring out what that balance is and 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 really getting to the parts saying like what are the parts of my non-digital life that matter the most? And and where do we see the limitations of digital technology to replace that? Which is really what, you know, many companies and services and and digital goods have been trying to do and, and sort of selling us on for many, many years. Um, that was the vision of the digital future. That's, you know, every Steve Jobs keynote speech and Mark Zuckerberg getting up there with his dancing head and stupid little legs on his meta thing and talking about, you know, this is the future of human interaction. Like there's, there is a push that digital is the future, right? Of everything. And, and this is my questioning of it in a very open and critical way. Yeah. That's, that's interesting you said that because, when I was reading it, I didn't get the feeling that you were anti-digital. It, uh, it felt more like in the last two years, our entire life has been taken over by digital. Like it's the pendulum has swung all the way to the left and our entire life is this. And here's all these things that we miss because the it's there's a serious imbalance that's happening. And it just seemed like that's what you were arguing was like, you really need to incorporate the experience of being outside of digital and you can still have digital and the two can be combined together without sacrificing one or the other. Yeah. Let's pick a really simple, stupid example. Restaurants and QR codes. Restaurants can benefit greatly from technology. There are point of ordering systems that allow you to see a menu online and maybe pre-order your food or find out where the restaurant is. It allows the back end of the restaurant to manage their inventory and their wait times and their rest, you know, their reservation times. And at the beginning of the pandemic, there was this stupid notion, you know, you had to bleach your eggs or I don't know, I wiped down my groceries for a week, you know, don't touch things. So we can't have physical menus anymore. We need QR menus. But now all these restaurants still have these stupid QR menus. Nobody likes them. They don't save a restaurant any money. The amount of money they have to like pay for the web developer to keep these things going is far more than it does to print, I don't know, 50 sheets of paper a day. Um, they're really annoying. They, they, they always have problems. There's, you know, vision issues. Uh, it gets in the way of the meal. It stands in between people, right? So I'm not saying I don't want any technology in restaurants or I don't want QR codes to be in the world. There's applications for them. I use them on the student council newsletter that I used to write for my kids' elementary school. But like, who is making the case still now that QR codes are the future of menus? Five years ago, people were doing that. This is the future of menus and the menu will be interactive. No, no, no. And then we all did it. And it's like, oh, God, please bring me a piece of paper. Like, just bring me a goddamn piece of paper <laughs> so I can order the food that I want to order. Do not make me take my phone out and like sign into some portal and leave my email. You know, like, 
how is this improving my experience as a diner, let alone as a human being on planet Earth? And that's that's what it is. Silicon Valley software engineers talk constantly about the need to A-B test, right? We're constantly A-B testing whether this color is better than this color in response to this. And, you know, it's rigorous scientific testing. And that's how we get to this perfect product that we're selling you on Kickstarter. We now have the chance to A-B test the future, right? We We went through a version of the future for a period of months, if not years, where like, we can look at these things and say, okay, in your life or in, you know, super kick brandings business, you tried working from home and everybody working remotely, you've tried everybody working in the office, what worked, what didn't, what do you want? And what do you value going forward? And how do you build your future around that? You've tried your children going to school in a building, you've tried your children going to school on an iPad, what part do you want? I don't think anybody's voting for iPad. You know, all these different aspects of our life, we we had the fortune through this horrible misfortune that we failed the world of road testing this digital future and, and seeing what the limits of that technology were and also seeing where we most craved the analog alternative, where we really realized that we valued and wanted and needed face-to-face -face conversation, for example, or a tactile experience, uh, like shopping in a supermarket for many people just was irreplaceable by the digital alternative. Even if you managed to do it and the groceries got delivered and it was really convenient, like most people I know have gone back to shopping in a supermarket. And that is kind of an intelligent way that we go forth and, and think about the future and build the future by being rigorous and, and critical in and what it is, instead of just accepting what was common before, which is that the digital thing is always going to be the better alternative for the future because it's the more complex one or technological one or digital is just our way forward. And this book is sort of questioning that. Yeah. Where do you think we, well, not everybody, but where do some people get this notion that the newest thing is automatically going to be better? Is it like a, a fear of being left behind or being seen as a Luddite or out mm -hmm. of touch? Or, or is it you know, for, for the people creating these things? Is there maybe a sunk cost bias? Yeah. Where they're like, hey, we, we put so much work in it. We can't admit that what we already had was better. I, uh, I'm writing a story about this right now um, <clears throat> for a magazine in the UK and, um, and Monocle, you may know them as the handsome people you are. <laughs> First of all, there's a deep seated cultural thing, right? And, and especially in, in the United States, which is that, you know, America is the land of new and the pioneers and whatever. And there has always been this kind of impetus toward newness and novelty and sort of progress of, of, of all costs as this is the way forward. And anyone who stands in this way is holding us back. And I think technology, whether we're talking about, you know, industrial technology or, you know, post-war tang space technology or cars um, or digital technology the past, you know, 40 something years uh, is, is the, is the easily accepted thing about that. It's like you think about Star Trek and its vision of the future. You know, what do people think about when they think about that? Oh, Star Trek, this beautiful vision of the future, or I don't know, Demolition Man or whatever. It's like, it's not the human relationships and how they've changed. It's like, oh my God, you know, they have three seashells that clean their butt in Demolition Man and everyone needs a Taco Bell, like amazing. Or like, look at the jumpsuits they wear on Star Trek. Or wouldn't it be cool to have a transporter like that? And then someone comes out and Steve Jobs shows you this thing and you're like, oh my God, it's just like the, the comms thing that you can speak to, you know, with your mother across the world. Like, isn't that amazing? The future's here. Um, but the real, the reality of the future is far more complex thing. And it isn't always this question of newer is better, right? We want certain things to have that high level of, of technology. New is better in certain areas, right? My friend works for a huge global company that builds sewage treatment plants. Like Steve, give me the best sewage treatment plant money can buy. Like, you know, like whatever the like technology is in line, that's what I want my city to have. Like I want as little poop in my drinking water as possible. Thank you very much. But in other things, it's, it, you know, new isn't always better. And I think there's many cases where it makes things worse. And so, you know, what's one of the biggest problems in cities and, and the way that, you know, they've developed around the world is cars. Like we 
latched onto that idea really in the the 1940s and 1950s and 1960s and said like this is the technology that is we are going to build our entire society around especially here in north america canada is not really any different than the us in that and we like ripped apart neighborhoods and put in highways and built entire cities like houston texas no offense nick mm-hmm. around cars i have tried to walk places in houston it's it. comical like it's actually funny trying to walk places in houston texas it's an entire city that is built to the scale and need of the car now with all these horrible consequences like the fact that houston texas is getting wiped off the map every year by tons of floods and hurricanes caused by the carbon that's burned from the cars that fuel houston texas go go astros the number one day of children dying in automobile accidents is halloween in the u.s every year right kids are out they're walking in their costume bam because the city has been built around it you can't you got to cross a six lane road to go get candy in houston so you know again it's 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 questioning this notion now now we have to look at that for digital technology how much of the world do we want to build around these technologies how much do we want the metaverse to be central to the way we do things in this world there's a lot of people who say it should be um but we have to really sort of ask those deeper questions speaking of Mark Zuckerberg in the in the metaverse. Uh, you said in the book, Mark Zuckerberg can shove any future where I'm happy to hang out with a hologram on my sofa right up his robotic ass. <laughs> but what are you, what are your specific thoughts on the metaverse? Any aspects of it worth exploring, or is this just one more giant step away from our own humanity? I mean, listen, I am sure you know I will strap on a pair of those stupid goggles at one point. Hopefully won't get super nauseous like the one couple other times I've tried virtual reality in the past. Um, that was like, I was like, okay, I got a barf in real life. Um, and I'm sure there'll be some interesting, wonderful, cool things. And and maybe it'll be fun or entertaining. Maybe there'll be things or experiences that I'll learn that'll be really cool. But like, is that the thing that I want to base my entire future around? That's what he's saying that's what other people who are sort of boosting it saying but you know is that the is that the underpinning architecture of humanity for the future i sure as hell hope not